Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look on answering the question, how do you change a lock from left to right? It's a very common question that I think a lot of folks uh, you know, might be in a position to have to actually answer. And it's quite simple. It's simple if you are you know, from an industry or a background by which you have to do it. Uh, otherwise, if you're not, then it's, it's, it can be mystifying. So that question really pertains to cylindrical type locks. Um, you know, knob trim, cylindrical locks that feature the key going in vertically. And here, what I mean cylindrical, a lock that is of this sort of construction where a latch bolt will fit in or slide into the edge hub of the lock. So further definition of what cylindrical means doesn't matter. Your lock looks like this, we're gonna call it cylindrical with a retracting hub that's inside of there, like that, okay? With this sort of lock, a cylindrical lock, that latch bolt's gonna only go in on one side of the body. And it, the latch can go either this way or the latch can go this way, okay? So the, the lock can either be a left-hand reverse or a left-hand lock. But if you were to need that to be on the other side, flipping it over toward, to have a right-hand or a right-hand reverse lock, now your cylinder's upside down, whereas before it was here, and now it's here. So the question ultimately begs the discussion, I want the teeth on the key to be pointed towards the top, is really what ultimately this is, or in some cases, people are accustomed to having it, uh, the, the cuts on the key pointed towards the bottom. Whatever the case is, it's more common to obviously have the teeth going up. So the way that this lock shipped from the factory is going to be, a, you know, compliant with it either being a left hand or a left hand reverse depending on how you flip the latch bolt so you have the opposite condition here's how you go about doing it almost all of these locks certainly most that I've encountered but not every one of them there are some locks that have a different construction that's a bit uh, more difficult to understand how to disassemble and, and partially disassemble and reassemble uh, work in this following fashion and this is the procedure by which you will follow to uh, change the hand of a lock and it, it, it matters uh, you know if you want to have you know the operation of the key such that it's oriented with the teeth pointed towards the, the uh, top of the door so what you have to do to make this happen is you have to have the keys you obviously have to have the lock and you have to have a tool some sort of tool that emulates having this point on it you know, a very small nail might work, although I don't like using nails because they're, it's a nail. Uh, what you have to do is insert the key and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. Counterclockwise will work as well, but I do it clockwise, just the way I do it. The key has to be inserted and turned and held in a turned position. And I'll explain why more in a moment. Uh, so in a case like this, where you really need, when switching these locks around, you end up needing to have uh, two hands. You need to use both of your hands. So what you'll end up do, doing, since you have to have the key turned and rotated, you're gonna have to just figure out a way to hold the lock in one hand and keep that, keep that key turned uh, with the other. Okay, I'll use my, I use my index finger for doing that. That allows me to take the tool in the other hand and get down to the tab that's inside of there. Now these locks will always feature a hole, and underneath there what you see is a, it's just a piece of metal, but what it actually is is a tab that's got a spring underneath it. So in order to depress the tab, the key must be turned 90 degrees. Okay, so I've got the key turned, held turned, my tool goes in and I can push it and I can tell that it has uh, retracted. And as I push the tab in, I am using uh, my middle finger and my thumb to push the knob trim up and off and as I do that I can remove the cylinder entire knob from the stem. Now keep in mind that before we were doing a left hand door so that meant that when the hub was on this side the teeth of the key were oriented like this so the original assembly was like this. Okay. So it's actually helpful to put it back on partially in this way. This is what it looked like before we started. Now all you need to do is take that, 
turn your hub 180 degrees, or your lock, and slide this back down onto it. It's helpful to keep the key in the cylinder. It's like a handle. Once you have that down to the point where the knob is onto the stem as far as it will go, because what's happening is that tab is projected out, uh, not allowing you to put the, uh, the knob fully back on. Uh, you're in a good position now to complete the rest of the installation. But first, you'll notice that the back of that tail piece, that, that piece of metal that's sticking out, is, let's just say it's flat. Well, what happens is you've got a cutout down in the base there that's also flat. Now, what you're seeing here is the tab is here, and you can see that when I push it in, how it depresses. Now, when that tail piece is in the, in the uh, receiver flat, it becomes an obstacle to the tab being depressed. It can't be depressed, and that's, the, in essence, the operation of a lock when it's locked. Otherwise, you'd be able to just pop the knob off. So what happens is the reason that you need to turn the, the key 90 degrees is because it takes that tail piece, rotates it 90 degrees, allowing the tab to depress. Okay? That's why you have to hold the key turn 90 degrees. Otherwise, you won't get the tab to depress, not without destroying the lock. So, back to where we were. We rotated this section 90 degree. Our teeth were still up on the key. When I have the knob pushed all the way down, it's hitting that tab, so it won't go any further. At this point, I can push my key in, and it will hold the cylinder in place. There's not really anywhere for it to go because the tail piece on the back of the cylinder is in the housing. The key is inside the cylinder. Now what you have to do at this point, the cylinder's pushed all the way in because there's a small amount of gap that's here that the cylinder can float in, like that. At this point, you need to turn the key again 90 degrees to the right, clockwise. And that will allow you, turn it and hold it turned, that will allow you to take that same tool, push, depress the tab, and then push the rest of the housing down over the stem. And at that point, the tab locks back into the hole that's in the in the stem in the in the uh, uh, in the stem of the lock that with in which the tab the slot that the tab rides in it will snap back into. It's already in, but it'll snap fully into. And at that point, the lock is now reversed. Always check for operation. Always try to pull the knob off. Always. Uh, I've been at a job where late on a Friday afternoon and I'm keying locks and I leave and I drive 20 minutes away and the client calls and says, the whole knob came off in my hand, what do I do? <laughs> and that's because you're keying locks and you're putting them back on or you're switching the knobs around and you don't fully test to make sure that that tab is seated back up into the knob uh, portion of the lock to prevent it from coming off. So the the Achilles heel of these, of course, to make them work, key has to go in, got to turn it 90 degrees. That takes the tailpiece, rotates it so you can depress the knob, uh, depress the tab. And when that knob goes back onto the stem, you've got it depressed and you push the tab in and then force the rest of it down. That tailpiece, uh, when you remove your finger from keeping it turned at 90 degrees, locks that tab from, from being depressed again. If you have any questions on how to reverse the hand of a lock uh, or any other lock technical questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We uh, you know, encourage technical questions. We feel that it separates us from our competition. And as a matter of fact, we know that it does. If you have any questions on locks uh, or any other basic sort of technical questions or not so basic, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.